Before we get started, I wanted to thank all of you for your kind and generous comments. I don't say it often enough. It is greatly appreciated. Many of the questions are the type of questions that I would ask if I was not familiar with something and I wanted the insight of someone who has worked with a tool or a wood finish or some such thing. As long as I can, I will try to answer your questions. I know that you know when the channel gets too big, it becomes impossible to answer all the questions. So as long as I can, I will answer. It is one way of my showing appreciation for your watching the videos. I've said it before and I'll say it again. For me, your watching these videos is a very humbling experience. I will try to keep your trust as we try to get through the future with all the questions looming in front of us. I know one of the biggest questions on your mind is what is the difference between the U.S. General and the Yukon cabinets? The gauge or thickness of the metal used in the manufacturing, is it different? Let's see if we can find the actual differences between that U.S. General and a Yukon cabinet. Hi anyone, I'm Scott Payne. They call me the old farmer. I'm trying to organize the work area and I know it's about as interesting as watching paint drip down a wall. I watch it all the time because I'm not the best painter. But it got me to thinking. I had trouble telling the differences between a U.S. General Cabinet and a Yukon Cabinet in the store because there were too many other folks doing the same thing I do that is drooling while walking the aisles. Did you know that down south they call the Yukon cabinet a y'all cabinet? I just thought you might like to know. A U.S. general cabinet is a much beefier cabinet. It doesn't flex while rolling along the floor like a Yukon would. A Yukon will rattle more than the general too. There are more choices with the general both in configuration and colors. Those who have been following the channel know that I have both a Yukon and a U.S. General Cabinet. We use the Yukon in the kitchen to store those awkward cooking utensils and keep an Instant Pot and a convection toaster on top. I have added the HFT 12 outlet 4 foot metal power strip to the back of the Yukon. We use it all the time for our appliances and we even plug the vacuum sweeper into the strip. If you don't want to go to the expense of a kitchen island, the Yukon makes for an excellent alternative. If you wish, you could put some kind of finish on the sides of the cabinet with either wood or some other veneer, or paint it a different color, or wallpaper it. I wouldn't try ceramic or similar materials because the flexing of the walls. It would pop the tiles off. I didn't realize how much I appreciated having the U.S. General Cabinet. It is well built. I said in earlier videos this cabinet is built well enough for commercial use. I've had as many as three drawers open at the same time without an issue. You may have your drawers configured differently, so be aware of the hazard of having multiple drawers open at the same time. I don't use the lock. The drawers have a small indent catch to keep the drawers closed. The quality of the paint is good as well as the welding and other forms of joining two pieces together. The drawer slides are sturdy and I can tell the difference between the Yukon drawer and the U.S. General drawers. The U.S. General is made farm tough. If your budget can only handle the Yukon, 
It is built similar to the tool chests from the 1960s. It's soft roll steel and it will do the job. I don't think you will have an issue for normal use. I wouldn't set a Cummins diesel engine on top of the Yukon. I wouldn't do that to the General, although it could handle the weight, where I would be very nervous with the Yukon. Both cabinets are the right height for me. The Yukon at 37 and 1 16th inches. The General's at 39 and 15 16th inches. Both work well for me, even though they are of different heights. The General comes with a rubber mat that sits on top of the middle cabinet. The wooden top of the Yukon is solidly attached to the cabinet, and I think is part of the actual structure of the cabinet. I pulled out my Harbor Freight calipers and got a strong surprise. I measured a spot on both cabinets. The spot is the side of the drawer close to the front, where there's no bent over metal. I got a reading of .04 on both cabinets. That's between a 20 and a 19 gauge for metal. Granted, it's the drawer and not the sides. I would not be surprised if there's a different gauge of material used in the general along the sides. We all know that bending and reinforcing steel will give it extra strength. And maybe that is what is done for the general, whereas not as much for the Yukon. The General is built like a farmall tractor fender, where the Yukon is built like metal ductwork in the home. If someone has a large mouth micrometer, you know, that looks something like the old-fashioned C-clamp, maybe we could get the gauge of the sidewalls of the General. Also, keep in mind that with the General, different cabinets may use a different gauge of steel. If you can do the check, please post in the comments for all of us to see. My conclusion, both are excellent for the weekend warrior. The general is suitable for most commercial conditions. Remember, I said the one I have is farm tough. I mean it. If I were to use a Yukon in a commercial setting, it would hold a smaller, delicate tool such as calipers, micrometers, any drafting tools, paint brushes. Hey, it would be perfect for a cashier's table. If it would fit, I wouldn't put their Hercules hex breaker inside the Yukon. I think the Yukon is perfect for the office portion of a garage. It would do nicely. But let's be honest, a U.S. General of the appropriate size would make a great cashier's counter too. I wonder if the Yukon would be good for rolling out pizzas. <laughs> Before we go, it's important to quickly mention for all who are visiting to subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment, and share with friends and family. Now for the most important part, thank you to those who have subscribed. Thank you. And yes, thank you to those who are visiting. We value you too. We're trying to reach 1,000 subscribers so that we may receive a pittance from YouTube to cover expenses. We replaced one camera, tripod, and bought a water-cooled editor for video production, plus all the tools we review. So if you could help us reach that 1,000 subscription point, thank you. Well, this is the old farmer Scott Bain. Be well, be safe, and be kind to someone. The VFW National Home for Children, providing families of veterans and active duty military opportunities for growth and development in a nurturing community. Please consider a donation to help their children and families. Icy Road speaking.